Welcome back to A Tribe Called Dylan podcast. This is the continuation of uh, the life after death dialogue. And today is the part two. It's part two, part two of the segment. And we're going to get right into it. So we, I believe we had left off. We were talking about um, psychic mediums. If you believe in them, uh, if you don't, Alvin, you said you do. Yes. I said that I never had a, uh, I've never had a reading done. Rose, you had uh, said a little bit about um, your experience with, uh, uh, I guess, whether you believe in psychic mediums or not. And I agreed. Angie, you didn't actually answer. I know you've never had a reading, but do you believe in psychic mediums? Okay. So I know that I had said previously that I'm not a skeptic. Uh, that I'm intrigued by their ability to channel and connect to our loved ones um, on the other side. So do I believe in psychic mediums? Um, yes, I, I think I, not, I think, yes, I do. They, I think there are some people on this planet that are gifted that have the, this ability to connect, you know, whether you call it the supernatural, whatever you want to call it, they have a heightened sense of connecting to people, um, on the other side. And they have this gift. Um, there's, uh, Teresa Caputo, um, from the long Island medium, uh, you know, watch her show, watch Tyler Henry, um, I know of people that have had readings and, um, I think maybe the, maybe the main reason I haven't had a reading is cause maybe I'm scared to know, like I, what I don't want to know. Yeah. Right. Cause yes. they can sometimes predict things or tell you what's going to happen. And I think for me, um, that I just, I want to live life organically. I don't want someone to kind of tell me like what's going to happen or something negative or good, but in some ways it might be good because it could prepare me ahead of time if something's going to happen mm-hmm. in my life. And actually, then I have a story on, on that. That happened to dad when he was here in, in the seventies and the eighties, dad got dad, really our sick. Dad. Yeah. Okay. Our dad got really sick and he went to the doctors on multiple occasions and they could not figure out what was wrong with him. He just had severe pain um, from his stomach to his back. And he actually ended up going to a psychic um, by accident and the psychic pinpoint where he was, the pain was starting from him and where it was wrong. And so we didn't know the word at the time. It was tuberculosis that he had, but doctors didn't really understand that. Yeah. But dad's always refers back to that psychic. If it wasn't for him kind of grabbing dad's lower part of the stomach yeah. saying, this is where it's wrong. Tell them to investigate here. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen. Yeah. Dad wouldn't have been around. I wouldn't be alive. Yeah. I don't think it was an accident though. I think they had reached like, where they just couldn't, no one could figure out what's wrong oh. with them. And someone said, we have a village doctor, someone who has some sort of abilities, just go see him. You're already at like, there's nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. And then that gentleman uh, grabbed him from the side and said, there's something he's like, I can't fix it. He's like, this a doctor needs to fix it. But he's like, this is where your problem is. And when he went to finally back to the doctors, they were doing testing and he was at the point where like, they don't think he's going to make it. And they finally found that he had tuberculosis in that same yeah. area where he had to operate on. And thank God they found it and yeah. he's here mm-hmm. today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and to add to that psychic medium, we're like, our grandma was very gifted on my dad's mother. I remember being uh dad's, Dad's, Dad's mom. mom? Our, yeah. Okay. Our grandma. And I remember being at her place and I was really young and she was kind of palpitating and being breathing funny. I remember it was day after school and she said, I think some, one of our uncles or so someone had passed away. We hadn't heard this man in like years or spoken about him, but she had this really weird, like look in her eyes. I remember feeling her stress of like, no, something's wrong with him. I think he's passed away. And then a week later, we had found out he had passed away a week before. So Mm -hmm. she had this intuition that she picked up on his energy. So um, I do believe that some people are really gifted with um, Mm -hmm. picking up those energies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're more like empaths. Yeah. And I feel like I'm kind of like that too. And I go to certain situations where I'm in a room, I pick up on people's energy and and I always find that too, like in certain places where I'm like, I actually need to like get out of here for a little bit because I'm just, I'm taking on other people's energy and it, it's almost taken over me to the point where I'm feeling what they're going through. And it's, it's, it's good and it's bad at the same time because you're trying to keep yourself in a good headspace and you, you pick up on their energy and you start realizing as you get older, you're like maybe I'm in an empath because I feel what they're going through, especially when certain types of uh, movies too, when they're really hard hitting, mm-hmm. you really pick up on the person's character and you feel exactly what they're going through. And then it resonates with you after too. You're like, wow, I can't believe like, and I think that's actually the point of a really good movie is to get in to your emotions and make you feel what they were going through. Right. So mm-hmm. to have that impact on you. So Yeah, I do. Um, 
I think, and I think you don't also have to have, it's not just going to a psychic medium. I think all of us, you know, have that yeah. inner ability, um, you know, to tap into something, whether you call it intuition, a sixth sense. Um, I know I had, um, I have something like that. I think where I'm, I don't know if you call it a sensitive, but I can pick up on energy or sometimes, um, you know, people from the, well, I guess not people, but souls from the other side, um, will try and connect with me and, and specifically our grandfather, um, yeah. uh, who I was very close to. This is my dad's dad. Uh, he was an amazing grandfather, taught us a lot about our culture, life. He was a very honest man, a very hardworking man, um, and just uh, left an amazing legacy for us to follow. And part of the reason why we're also doing this, right. um, but I know he lived a troubled life because, um, you know, his brother, uh, younger brother was murdered at a really young age. And I think he took that grief with him and carried that grief through life. So we always saw him sad. Like, I don't know if you right. two remember, like I rarely saw our grandfather, our, um, Baba, like ever smile. Like he rarely smiled. Yeah. Right. He was pretty good. He's, he smiled. Yeah. Quite with, often. with Ali, he had a different experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I know that he's come into, um, he's given me some whispers over the years about situations. Uh, he has sent me premonitions about things that are going to happen. Um, you know, I've gone into gone and spoken to family members and said, Hey, like Baba is coming in my dreams and, and uh, he has a message for someone I might not necessarily, or I haven't been able to necessarily pinpoint who the message was for, but lo and behold, a couple of months later when something happens, right. I, right. I brought it both up to you guys. Yeah. And I think I mentioned to both of you, you know, a few years ago, Baba keeps coming in my dream. I'm not able to sleep at night. Like I'm scared to go to sleep. Like what's going on. And then lo and behold, um, you know, our, uh, our uncle passed away at that yeah. time. And I thought the message was for my, my dad. So I think I was like, misfiring like you know how they say your signals are mm -hmm. misfiring like i uh i was going to dad and i was concerned about his health and i do remember having this conversation with my chacha uh, a week before he passed away and chacha is my dad what that means in um in our culture is dad's youngest brother chacha um it's almost like the chacha you know that dance the chacha um but i remember having this conversation saying to him like hey like baba is coming in my dreams and like i have a message for somebody uh, i just don't know who but i'm going to share it with you and um i think all of us we didn't see that one coming so we i think all of us are, are in tune and we have some ability it's whether we actually channel it and turn it on and um, are receptive to the information coming in, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so another good one that I want to um, uh, speak to you guys about. I love this topic, love this subject, everything about it, even though I get scared. But you said uh, from your experience from that hotel room that you felt an energy, a darkness, something. No, I felt it all right. Yeah, and I know that, Rosie, you kind of uh, spoke a little bit about, you know, spirits. So my question is... Do you believe in spirits, guardian angels, and ghosts? So three different components there are spirits, guardian angels, and ghosts. Because the reason I say spirits and guardian angels, because I think those are positive and ghosts sometimes I think is like negative when you see a ghost. It's meant to what scare about you. Casper the friendly ghost. I loved him. True. Yeah. Uh do you believe in it? I do. Um I think that you can't just say ghosts are bad. I think we uh, we automatically put like a negative connotation on it. I think there are positive, good ghosts that are there to help you uh, send you a message or help you with whatever you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And then there's some the bad ones, like we say, the lost souls or the tormented souls that mm -hmm. haven't crossed over or they were they've done some bad things in their previous life and they're kind of stuck here and they're here to uh, maybe mess with you or not. Basically, like I just say, like or the soul, sorry, the one that that uh how do i say it they were they were bad souls here and they're stuck in like this realm and they don't know what to do so they're just kind of they're just going to mess with you because they're not able to get to that side mm -hmm. right. they're not able to go back to being a physical form mm -hmm. they're just there to like i guess you know mess around with you mm -hmm. so i don't know exactly where i'm going with that but okay that's, yeah, that's but you're I'm going saying. somewhere yeah. <laughs> yeah just don't know where i was gonna put it together i lost my <laughs> train of thought no, so i was thinking like i think he lost his train yeah, yeah i think so that's all right see when i think it, when i hear the term ghost i naturally just gravitate towards it being dark ghost because it's meant to 
like scare you. Oh. But when someone says spirit or guardian angels, I'm like, oh, light, 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 like right away. It's like, you know, the stars are shining and it's like fairy tales, butterflies. I don't know why, just the term. Cause yeah, you're yeah. right. You could be a good ghost or a bad ghost, yeah. but well, then why do we well, say ghost? Now I got my train of thought back. <laughs> okay, <yes. laughs> what I meant to say was that I think the, the, the bad ghost, what we call, or some of the people that had their life cut too short where okay. it wasn't on their terms. It was maybe some oh, sort of tragedy, right. some tragic accident, and they want to come back here and they didn't really don't know what to do. So they're just trying to connect with you, but maybe we're taking it as like they're scaring us. So they're doing uh, bad things to us, but maybe they're just trying to send you a message that they can't mm -hmm. get through to somebody else. And I think they try to find people that are more intuitive. Like they would send it to Ange because mm -hmm. maybe we're not very intuitive because I right. feel like mm -hmm. I don't really get too many messages in my sleep. And if I do, I've forgotten it by the time I've woken up and Ange sends remember everything that happened or <laughs> yeah, dreams you wake true. up and tell you exactly what happened and i'm like i i can remember for about five seconds when i wake up i'm like oh i should write this down and by the time i did like, yeah, i forgot what happened at least for until tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> okay rose what about you yeah um i'm gonna share a story and again this was my probably my first time realizing there was something bigger i was quite young i remember um, so our par my grandfather was quite religious and he'd always go to the Sikh temple and do what we call as a kanpat. It's a three day um, uh, kind of, I, want, I don't want to say spiritual retreat, but three days prayer session where we would spend the weekend at the temple. And because he worked uh, there all the time, you know, we would, we would participate in those three day uh, prayers with him. I remember getting ready at the house. Uh, at the time, my grandparents lived across the street. My parents were working and they were going to meet us at the temple. So you and I were in the house uh, getting you ready. You say you and I, that's you Sorry, and me. Angie and I were in the house, um, you know, packing and getting stuff ready for the weekend. And I remember standing in front of the long mirror and I used to wear dresses and we called them frocks back then. <laughs> I used to love wearing my dresses and I would twirl in my dresses and I was waiting for uh, Angie to get ready. So I was standing in front of the mirror twirling in my dress or I don't know, probably an hour and then my uncle had come to, come to the door and knocked on the door and said, let's go. So we packed everything in his car and we drove off. And so the city was Richmond at the time we were living in Surrey. So it was about a half an hour drive. And somewhere, I think maybe to the halfway point, I just somehow looked down and all of a sudden there was a really big rip in my dress. And it wasn't like a regular size. It was a rip where my entire underwear was now showing. And panty? Yeah, panties. panty. We don't call, we don't say underwear anymore. It's called okay, panty. Okay. So my panty was showing. <laughs> diaper. And uh, <laughs> I was panty. Your diaper was showing. Uh, and I remember crying and just saying, "Well, this is like my favorite dress. I didn't pack enough dresses. I won't have anything to wear for all three days." And Bless my uncle. He was so nice. And he was like, do you want me to turn back home and get you another dress? And I was like, yeah, I want to go home and change my dress. And so we came back to the house and, and you had the keys and you opened the door. And I remember you going, what's that smell? And you had put fries in the oven, the toaster oven, and it was burning. And we weren't going to return for three days. So I truly believe, because I know my dress was not ripped at the house, that something brought us back to the house. Mm -hmm. otherwise something, the house. otherwise the house would have burned down. I would have burned the house down, y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. True story. This yeah. is a true so story. So for me, was I remember just being so young and saying, there was something here because I stood for an hour in this dress. Why did I not see my quote unquote panties showing quote then? Unquote, diaper. <laughs> yeah. Showing not underwear. Then. Why did it decide to come when I was in the car? You know, whatever it was, it was something to me that time made me feel someone else was helping. Yeah. Someone the else was The universe was, was yeah. yeah. Someone was watching out for someone you. Was and watching made me. You go someone, back. Someone's always had my back. I've yeah. always felt mm -hmm. like something yeah. has always had and my back. I think there was a similar story where we had the house in Surrey. I don't know how it went, but you guys were leaving somewhere and something had to, you guys had to come back to the house and you guys came back to find that the iron was plugged yeah, in oh, and yes. there was a fire starting around the around the outlet area because when we came back I was like there was a burnt hole around the dad didn't come next back to in the time curtain. yeah next yeah. to the curtain that curtains would have caught on fire and the house would have caught on fire yeah. so that was another story where something happened and it made you guys go back to the house just in time to catch it and unplug mm -hmm. the iron and I think after that day dad's always had this paranoia yeah. even me now too when I, before I leave the house I check the house like three times over I put my hands on the stove and I, if I have something I'll just unplug it out of the wall because I know if it's unplugged there's no way it can accidentally turn right. on and I always have that paranoia 
way too that I, especially with your guys' curling irons where so many times have you guys left it on or you've unplugged it but you left it leaning down way downwards on a wooden dresser and you come back it's a burnt uh, mark on there and you're like yeah. if that was hot that would have definitely caught on fire yeah so yeah. And I think lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unplug half your stuff and don't triple check it before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. rely on your smoke detectors. <laughs> yeah. And I think both of those times, our uncle, our cha cha, was always with us. Yeah. Uh, to bring us back, because I I do remember the the. Um, the, um, not the curling iron, but the hot iron. Uh, I do recall that one. I think that was me. Um, the, definitely was wasn't me, the definitely wasn't me with the hot iron. You were young. Yeah. And the French fries. I don't it it wasn't young. I still the hair. I don't use that. Well, you're, yeah. You, why would you be using a curling iron? Exactly. exactly. So it's all about the age. Right? It's, not, it's about the I didn't start using a curling iron. Well, I'm curious to know if there are any men that use curling iron. What about those ones that have long hair? I think hair? so. I think that, I, th I think a lot of guys do use straightening irons to yeah. Yeah, some yeah, lush yeah. and long hair. Right. Um, yeah. I don't re I have no recollection of the French fries issue, but if you're saying it's true, then that was probably me once again too. God, my track record is not good. Not good at all. Um, okay, moving on, moving on here. Um, this is a good one. And I can say that I have experienced this or received this, but for either of you, um, have you ever received signs from your loved ones that have passed over? And if you have, I want an example. Before I start, I'll let you answer that question first if you have something, if you're ready. Um. Uh, well, I... I Here's the thing. I believe I have always received signs from the other side, from our loved ones. I just think at certain points in my life, I wasn't receptive to the information. I would block it. I didn't know what it was. You know, I would get a little anxious or, you know, like my heart would start to like palpitate a little bit because I was like, what's going on? Where is this? And, or who's speaking to me? But now that I've gotten older and I understand, um, don't be afraid if someone from the other side is speaking to you, if there's a whisper. Um, I recall a couple of years ago when our um, beloved family dog, Chico, passed away. Um, that was really, really difficult for me um, because Chico was like my child and like your child, Elvin. Um, and I was really struggling with the loss of Chico. Um, and I just don't know why she would always, well, well, I know why she would always be on my mind. But I remember when I was struggling, I went and actually um, got a tattoo of her name. And I have no tattoos, but just, you know, sometimes when you're grief stricken, you do any thing to try and help with the grief process. And I went and got a tattoo and I just remember coming home that day and I felt like she was with me. There was a closeness, like she was a part of her is always with me. And I recall saying, Chico, I gotta, I wish you were here. I could show you this tattoo and, and whatever, whatever you call it. So I went upstairs, uh, into my bedroom to put some cream on it to, uh, to, um, I guess, make sure that it wasn't chopping and it wasn't peeling. So just to keep it hydrated, keep the tattoo area hydrated. And I had turned on the bedroom light. So I went into the bathroom and all of a sudden I see the lights go off and on. And it was enough. It was quick, but it caught my attention where I'm like, how did the lights, they, and they both, both my, um, table night table lights went off and on, I guess the lamps you can say. And right away I had this warm feeling come inside. I'm like, this is Chico. So I went back out. I went back, stepped out of the bathroom and I said, Chico, is that you? And I'm not, no joke. The lights literally went back off and on. And I was like, okay, she's, she's always here with me. So that was, um, one of the first, first times I think, um, in my life that I started to pay attention to, Hey, they do communicate with us from the other side. Um, and then over the years now, once we, um, with the loss of our, our cha-cha, um, he worked for Coca-Cola and I'm, I was a Pepsi drinker prior to this, but I remember there was this running joke in our family that, you know, like if I ever go or, you know, and I see you drinking Pepsi from the other side, I'm going to, you know, come say something to you. And so I have slowly crossed over to the uh, Coca-Cola beverages now occasionally. And uh, I know Coca-Cola must be excited about this. <laughs> they, and Pepsi's probably like, whoa, we lost her. Um, but I constantly see Coca-Cola trucks. And I feel like when there's times in my life where I'm struggling or if I need some clarity on an issue and I, I talk out loud to my cha-cha, lo and behold, the next day I'll see a giant Coca-Cola something like a van, a truck, um, just some symbolic symbol of the connection to Coca-Cola and my uncle. So for me, um, that's how I feel they've been communicating or my loved ones have been communicating to me. What about you, Elle? 
Yeah, I would same thing. Uh, I've had the similar situations with Uncle. I've had other stories with Chico, but I'll tell you about the one I had with Uncle. And we were actually together in the car. This you and was I, about, like me yeah, and you me, and I? you and Robin were in the car. Okay. I think mom was... Uh, Robin was, is our yeah. cousin. Yeah, our cousin Robin. We were... This is about a year, I think, after he passed. And we were... I think it was... We were at the house and we were just lounging around. And we heard that... Uh, I think you had told us that we heard that Army Navy was... Uh, shutting down they're doing a big clearance sale you know how our indians are like oh they're shutting down liquidation let's go check it out see <laughs> it's what a they good have deal. There. so we might need some bulk supply of uh, sleeping bags we yeah. don't know yeah so we went and checked it out and we were obviously just having conversations about uncle and as we're going down the hill in new westminster we really started talking about it and we said yeah we miss you unks we love you wherever you are um take care and we'll see you again and as we're going we're talking to we're going down the hill and it's a red light for us and we stop and you you could not miss it. It was meant for us to see it. As we stopped at that very moment, maybe about 30, 30 seconds later, a gigantic Coca-Cola truck slowly started to drive by. And it was slow enough that you'd have to stare right at the gigantic truck <laughs> sign. And we're like, that's unks. And then we go up and we're going to park. And as we're leaving the place again, we were talking about him. And that same time on the way home, we saw another Coca-Cola truck. And it always we're at as a light, we're at a red light for us. We're stopped and the truck is driving across slowly. And we got that acknowledgement of like, okay, he's mm-hmm. here with us. We're thinking yeah. about him. And and to let the viewers know, he drove a Coca-Cola oh, yeah. truck. Yes. That's yeah. why there's so and he much was of a it. Pro, um, every time, yeah. like my lunch bag, I always take to <laughs> uh, work all the time was a Coca-Cola bag. All our glasses at home were Coca-Cola. Right. We mm-hmm. always had Coca-Cola gear and always had coke in our fridge yeah and he was uh he was, he was a coca-cola was truck very driver. loyal very yeah, loyal very, very loyal yeah. yeah yeah i agree what about you rose and sorry i should repeat the question okay have you ever received signs or have you ever received signs from your loved ones that have passed over and if you have give me an example so i actually don't have a lot of people that were very close to me that have passed away Thank, thank God. Uh, uncle was definitely more closer to the two of you, but I have on occasion asked him a question or have, you know, as she has to say, I've asked him a question and he has given me that same message that he gives to you guys, which is I will put a giant Coca-Cola truck um, uh, right in front of you. So uh, sometimes I'm like, I'm not sure if I followed the answer. And so I've come to realize that maybe I should ask um, a question with an answer or rephrase it. He has come to me. Uh, Chico has come to me during my, my psychedelic journey. And mostly who I would say I connected to after ayahuasca, shockingly, was um, Baba, our grandfather. He really came through for me. Uh, and I'm, I find that I'm now mimicking a lot of his behavior. Like, I mean, the only person that I know who used to go for a walk every day for an hour was him. And yet... I magically go for a walk almost every day for an hour. So uh, I'm finding myself just tuning into his um, intuitions and and mimicking a lot of his behavior when he was alive. Mm, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, Now, God, how can I word this one? Because I feel like we have touched on this um, subject, but I'm going to just throw it out there anyways. Is the spirit world a real place? As far as I know, I think it is. And what is the spirit world? Like just spirits like floating well, around there? Well, that's what I think. I think it's just another universe or it could be. I think we're all tied together, but I think there's different realms of it. And depending on what kind of soul or where you've been to, I think it's just a place where you're you're happy. Like you're in a, just a form of light and you're in an energy field that everyone is just happy. You're living how you want to live. And I think you also get to come here and see us and be present like how we say we get these certain signs when people say my lights are flickering or mm-hmm. you get be people i've seen like when someone's passed over they've said hey come uh, your favorite bird was this and they come back as a bird to visit their family and they know that's them because like why is this one random hummingbird always coming to us we don't even have any feeders outside you get signs like that and i think it's a real place i think it's a real i don't know if it's a physical place but i think it's a spiritual uh place full of light and love and People are there existing. I don't think I have words that will explain how I'm feeling about the spirit world. I mean, what's real? It, sometimes we think of this reality is my mm-hmm. perception of reality. What I will say, my answer will be there's a movie with Jamie Foxx doing the voiceover call Souls. Mm-hmm. That's how I would explain it. When, when I watched Souls, I was like, huh. It's exactly what I was thinking and feeling. So that's, I'm going to leave that answer as 
I would encourage everyone to watch the movie Souls. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a cartoon, movie, Pixar film, and it's got Jamie Foxx doing the voice. That that represents my answer. So I, I can't say it to you. I can't. I don't think I can sum it up in the English language. Okay. Yeah, and Maybe. I think also like it, if some even till this day, there are some people that believe Earth is the only pl- the place, a planet that exists. And if you go get outside of here, there's nothing else out there. Right. If it wasn't for photography and satellite uh, imagery, we probably would even people wouldn't believe that there are other planets around us besides the sun. Uh, they were just in the moon. They would just think that was the only mm-hmm. us, sun and moon. That's about it. But there are other planets in our solar system. And who are we to say there's not another solar system that's yeah. right. that light years away? Or that there's life outside yeah, of Earth. Yeah, I think there's a parallel universe. There has to be. Are we the only, what we call ourselves intelligent, but are we the only place? Uh, are we intelligent? Yeah, exactly. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some days I wonder about our intelligence. Yeah. Okay, so same question to me. Is a spirit world a real place? Spirit world. Okay, I do think spirits are real. Uh, do they live in a world... I don't know the answer to that question. I think they're, they exist in an orbit of some sort. Um, like they're, cause they're constantly moving. They're around us. Uh, like they, they come and do, I feel like pulse checks on us. Like, Hey, you good. You good. Like, I feel like I've had that over the years with my loved ones where they tap in. It's like, you're not doing so good. And like, they're, they always come to me when I'm feeling low and it's kind of like, I got your back. I'm here. Keep going girl. And like, you do you. And like, you get that little, like that Rocky, like, yo, I can do it. And then you kind of go about your day. So I feel like they're, yeah, they're circling around us in some form of orbit. I don't know if you call that a world, uh, if you call that another dimension, but there's something yeah. there that I, I think don't like, really know how to answer. It's like magnetism. It's around us. It's here. We can't mm-hmm. see it. But if you put a magnet in the middle of the field or you put it, you take a compass, hmm. people use a compass all over the world to, to guide them. And yeah. there's a force field in the earth that's magnetic as well. Very true. So it's there. We just can't see it. Yeah. And it's drawn to us, right? Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, okay. Rose and Al, we did briefly connect uh, about this issue on the first episode, but um, do you think people will have the same family connections in their next life. Um, and that, and this is obviously a question for those that believe there's an afterlife, but are we going to come back and be siblings and our mom and dad going to be our mom and dad, or like, is it going to be a completely different experience? There's a book that I'll have to, I'll put, we'll have to put in the bottom of the um, description because I can't remember the author's name or the title, but it was a really good book. And he spoke about that. Um, We do come back, just not in the same form. Like if you have a soul connection with someone, you'll come back to complete your unfinished business. So I, mom and dad won't come back as our, my mom and dad, but dad might come back as my child. Mom Mm, might come back as my sister. You might come back as my husband. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we come back in different forms and we are meant to complete what we maybe didn't complete and take over. So, uh, again, I'll have to get that book and that author who explains it really beautifully as to how soul connections Mm -hmm. uh, manifest in different lives. Then obviously this author believes in reincarnation because that's what that is, right? Um, There's actually um, a few religions that actually believe incarnation and our religion is one of them, which is uh, Sikh Sikhs. Uh, I know Hindus, um, Jains, and Buddhists also believe in um, reincarnation incarnation, but there's, um, you know, amongst, amongst, um, I guess people in our religion that don't believe in reincarnation, they do believe, um, in some form of an afterlife, right? right? So in this case here, um, I don't know if I'm going to meet you in, in our next life. We'll have to find out. Yeah. We'll what about, to find out. what about you, Al? I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> yeah. See you on the other side. Yeah. Do you think you're, where, where do you think you're going to be in your next life? If you think, um, I hope on another planet and another solar system, I want to see another world out there that's mm. um, like they see it like in the matrix. I want to see like another robotic world out there and see what mm. that look like. I feel like this planet in like I was gonna say, 100 this is years is going to yeah. become robotic. Yeah. If you think about it, when people have issues with their body, they're getting like a an implant, they're getting metal put into their body. Yeah. They're getting a new hip. They're getting a metal hip, new knees. Yeah. Pretty much becoming the bionic man yeah. or woman. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I would like to be born in another planetary system see what it's like out there. Mm, okay. Uh, posing it back to myself. Okay. I, I often think about this question and I think it comes because 
with age comes wisdom. Um, and then with wisdom comes enlightenment and you think differently. And I think about this question all the time and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen in the afterlife, where I'm going to be, who I'm going to be with, or if I'm going to have the connection with you guys. And then sometimes I get choked up because we have an amazing connection for yeah, siblings. We're very lucky. Yeah. Very blessed. And we're going to talk about our second why on another episode, why we did this, because, um, I know that there's a lot of people, um, that I've been in contact with that aren't really connected to their siblings. And when I hear that, I'm like, what? Like siblings are built-in best friends. Like it's an automatic best friend by default. You have a best friend that you can go and confide in, speak to about anything. And you got your own cheerleader. So why would you not want to stay connected to your sibling? Um, oh, so for me, um, man, I would love to come back in the afterlife with you three. And I would love to come back with the knowledge that I'm gaining as I'm getting older and I'm wiser, I'm smarter, not that immature 20 year old that I was or 30 year old back in the, you know, back in the day where I thought I knew everything and I didn't, but you know, I I'm getting wiser and I feel like we are because of that Intel and knowledge, our bond is getting stronger. So mm -hmm. I want to keep this as long as I can in this life. So I try and, and be conscious of one day, like it's not going to be the three of us. It's going to be the two of us. Ah, get choked up now. Um, and I don't want to see now I'm starting to crackle. Damn it. I don't want to cry. It's, right. it's hormones. One of us is going to leave. Yeah. And I, out. and we're like, um, you know, it's like, it's always been the three of us and I can't imagine, um, not having going through this journey without you guys and sharing like, Hey, this is what happened to me or, or that happened. So God, my wish, um, I, I can get through this. Um, and it's probably because I watched the Meghan Markle um, inter a docu-series with Harry, and that's probably why I'm getting a little emotional. But um, I really hope that if there is an afterlife, that the three of us come back together because we're pretty badass and we're pretty fierce. So We're the trifecta. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. yeah. Growing up, I thought by default that all siblings were tight. I, I know. Because I, I was like, I just, like, it doesn't matter what I do. They always have my back and I always have their back. And it's like, if even you go out and something happens, there's an argument. I got your back then and there, but when we get home, then I'll yell at you and tell you you're an idiot or why yeah. did you do this? Why did you do that? But there, it doesn't matter what happens. Like if a fight goes down, I got your back. We throw it out. And then once you get home, we sort it out. But I think you might've been wrong in this situation, yeah. but in that moment, no, your loyalty is paramount yes. and you have each other's back and we, we deal it up after. And I find out as I got older, that that's not the, the norm amongst quite a few siblings. And I don't know of very many people that are that tight and that close. Mm -hmm. And I also have uh, growing up with a few friends that I consider my own brothers, my own family, because we're tight like that. If yeah. something happens uh, at the drop of a dime, I got your back, whatever you need. And we'll sort it out after. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. And that makes me sad when I hear, um, um, hear about people that are estranged with their siblings or, you know, I have a brother, I haven't spoken to him in a few years or a, or a sister. And I, and I think when I hear that, like, what do you mean you haven't spoken to your sibling in a couple of years? Like we talk every day or every other day, like we're up each other's ass all the time. What's, like almost we're kind of annoying with each what's other. What's funny is whenever I travel on a plane and I hear that from someone like, oh no, I've spoken to my selling in a decade i'm always like you know like mm -hmm. a deer behind Shock, them. I'm yeah like, i'm same and i don't know what to say because i'm so shocked my mind doesn't know how to process that because i don't know life yeah. other than you know even when i'm gone away for weeks i can still call you guys and mm -hmm. touch base and just know you're there you know so mm -hmm. it's strange to think that i wouldn't communicate with you guys yeah. for years upon years and even like my close uh friends they're like close with you guys too. Right, so it's like, yeah, if it's I don't funny. answer their call, he knows who he is. If I don't yeah. answer his call, and then he <laughs> just call called us. you guys like, where's Al? Why don't I answer my call? And they're like, you need to call him back. He's annoying me now too. <laughs> well, and that's what I noticed that we share friends. Yeah. All yeah. your yeah. friends are my, my friends. friends. Call you yeah, my yeah. friends. Conversation yeah. About me. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. one of those people like, why are you calling my friends? I'm like, that's great. I was like, we need, you need to have close build people build in your life. Build bigger. Yeah. 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 Our, yeah. This is our community. This is our tribe. Like, I don't look as if we're sharing friends. Like, I met a good human being. It, you should all be friends Absolutely. with this person. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's hard and, finding and our people. friends, I don't think of my friends as friends. They're family yeah. to me, yeah. all of them. You know, we invite yeah. them to holiday events, Christmas, all the holidays yeah. you can think of. And, you know, we go to their holidays, you know, if they're a different faith or a different culture. But friends to me are, you know, family. family yeah. End of the day, first and foremost. And you give them the benefit of the doubt, like until they do something that changes that relationship otherwise. Yeah. But as time goes on, you go through these milestones, you realize, oh, wow, you're still in my life. Okay, yeah. now we're, we're 
we're in a different level right. of trust. We're being, you come closer. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I'm like an onion. I let people into certain people into a certain circle. And as we go through time and we spend more time together and go I'm through there. certain situations and you've learned things about me, I learned things about you. You get closer and closer and closer until you're in the inner circle. Then you peel a layer, yeah. right? One layer at a time. Mm-hmm. I agree. And then it's funny when you said that um, with friends, um, you know, if they cross you, you know, if a friend crosses you, then it's like, as Russell Peters says, like somebody going to get hurt mm-hmm. real yeah. bad. Right. Yeah. But for the most part, when you have friends, we um, look at them as family and we're yeah. loyal and like yeah. fiercely loyal. Yeah. And I think that's how we've grown up too. Is like, oh, that's your friend. Call them over. We'll hang yeah. out. And then you build a bond like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're having dinner. Yeah. Call your friends yeah. over. Come hang out. Come up to, look, come over to the house. We even have uncles that invite our friends over yeah. for dinner. Know, at their right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, our, yeah, one of our, our, our Arjun uncle, he'll yeah. say, hey, tell your friend to come over for Christmas or for the holidays or for football yeah. or, you know, we're watching the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm like, oh, OK, cool. Even like, uncle that uh, who passed it, he used yeah, to invite the so, neighbors yeah. over. Yeah. Every time have a barbecue or something, invite the neighbors over. Invite whoever yeah. come over and hang out. You're right. It's all a little community, right? That's what it boils down to, the little community. Well, um, this was a great episode. Agreed. Uh, Learned lots from you. Another one. Another one. (laughs) Another one in the books. Um, I feel like I'm learning from both of you. I am learning that I need to at least consider ayahuasca, consider it. Give it a go. Mm -hmm. um, And that um, there's- Well, if you're considering it, that's your calling. She's Mm -hmm. calling you. Oh, I'm getting scared. Woo, I'm getting scared. All right, folks, we want to say thank you so much for tuning in and listening to our episode. This was the second part of Life After Death. We It was a two-part segment where we talked about and you heard our perspective on whether we believe there is life after death or a so-called afterlife. Um, so until next week, and I said, um, and I'm going to try not to say, um, as we progress forward, because that is my default word. I'm fully aware of that guilty as charged uh, moving forward. I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to listen to us. If any of today's content resonated with you, please go ahead, like subscribe and share. And don't forget to check out our social channels. We are on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. And there is some different content on there where it showcases who we are and you can get to know us. On behalf of my entire team here, which are my two siblings, I'm Angie Dillon, and this is a tribe called Dillon Podcast. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. See ya. Bye.